What's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gust, and I'm back in the chemistry classroom. Today, we're talking about acids and bases and neutralization reactions. We talked about what an acid was. We talked about what a base was. We never talked about what would happen if we reacted to acids and bases. So today, we're going to take a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, HCl. We're going to mix it with sodium hydroxide. And if we remember what uh, an acid does, an acid adds an H to water, makes spicy water or hydronium, and bases add OH to water or takes apart the hydronium ion. So if I think about what a base does, which is the OH, and I think about what an acid does, which is the H, and I think about reacting them together, I get H plus OH, that ends up making water. And this is what we call a neutralization reaction. Anytime we have an acid and a base get together, one of their products is water. They neutralize each other. They take away the acid property of the acid and the basic property of the base, and we're left with water and what we call an ionic salt. And you're saying, well, that is salt. It's sodium chloride. I don't mean salt like table salt, like Morton salt. I mean salt like an ionic compound. It could be lithium chloride. It could be barium chloride. It could shoot, be sodium fluoride. I don't know. It's an ionic compound. We're left with this. This is our basic neutralization reaction. And today in class, we're going to see how we can use a neutralization reaction through a process called titration to determine the concentration of different things. So if we think about our pH scale, when something is acidic, its pH is uh, near-ish one. And if something is very basic, its pH is very near 14. Well, for something that is completely neutralized, that pH is equal to 7. So if I'm thinking about when is the pH equal to 7, it's under this neutralized condition. That neutralized condition is when the amount of the concentration of H3O plus is exactly equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion. When these two concentrations are in equal amounts in, um, I'm sorry, another concentration, the number of moles. I messed that up. The number of moles, when the pH is 7, is when the number of moles of HCl, or in this case, H3O+, plus, when this number of moles is equal to moles of NaOH, or more particularly in this case, OH minus. When their number of moles are equal to each other, we have this condition of neutrality, this condition of a pH of 7. Let's go take a peek at what I'm saying because it's much easier to see it than it is to talk about it. Over here, I have got my setup. This is called a burette. And a burette is a long column with gradations on it and milliliters all the way down here. And I filled this thing up with a base. I have filled this thing up with 0.5 molar uh, sodium hydroxide. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some hydrochloric acid, and this hydrochloric acid has a concentration of 0.5. It's the same concentration uh, as the uh, base in my burette. And I'm going to add about 10 milliliters of it to an Erlenmeyer flask. So let's go ahead and take it out. Let's dump some in. Let's see what we get to. I don't want to go too high. I don't want to dump back out. Uh, okay, let's go to the dropper now. I poured some in. Let's drop, 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 drop till we get to 10. Bam, 10 milliliters. I've got 10 milliliters of acid, uh, 0.5 molar HCl. I'm going to add it to the Erlenmeyer flask here. Get all the drops out, get it down the side. And I'm going to add my indicator. We know that sometimes it's hard to see uh, the reaction. So I have a universal indicator. And we learned last time that the universal indicator will turn red or yellow in the presence of an acid. It turns green when it's neutral. And it turns blue when it's basic. So now you see it's red. This is indicating to me that it is acidic. At home, I want you to go ahead and guess how much base will I have to add in order to neutralize 10 milliliters of a 0.5 molar HCl solution with 0.5 molar NaOH. Again, I want the number of moles of HCl to be equal to the number of moles of NaOH. I hope this is kind of straightforward, but we'll see. I'm going to start by turning uh, my, my burette open and start draining some out, okay? Let's see what we got. As I start to drain some out, I can slowly start to swirl this, and you see that it still remains red. At this point, I've added about two milliliters of base to it, 
and it's clearly still acidic. Let's go ahead and add two more milliliters to this thing and see if we uh, notice a change. Still red, huh? Still red. I'm looking at it, still red. It's hardly even yellow yet. This thing is clearly still acidic. Let's go crazy. Let's add three more milliliters. I know, we're moving fast, that's okay. I think I know what's gonna happen. Uh, stop it there. Uh, let's look at it now. Now, uh, it was kind of changing colors, but I give it a quick swirl and it's back to reddish pink. I've added a total of seven, so if you guessed somewhere less than seven for how much I had to add, you're wrong. Let's get up to nine milliliters added. I'm at nine milliliters. Oh, did you see the purple? That was kind of cool. Half it was purple, half it was red. Clearly a reaction's taking place. Purple is our base color, uh, but right now it's still red, so it's still on the acidic side of pH. Let's add things a little slower now. Let's add things a little bit, maybe drop by drop. Let's see if we can get it drop by drop and see what happens to this color change. I'm a righty, so I gotta crisscross my hands, you know? Uh, anything crazy happening? I see, I see like purple showing up, but not staying. It like, I swirl it and it goes away, come on. Where am I at now? Nine and a half, swirl it. Come on, uh, oh, there we go. Whoa, 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 what? One drop, folks. I added one stinking drop, and it goes from acidic to basic just like that. Unbelievable. What does it add? If I look real closely, I'm not sure we can see this, but if I look closely, can you see on camera? It says 10 milliliters, so think about that. We started with 0 0.5 molar HCl. I added 0 0.5 molar NaOH. I started with 10 milliliters of this stuff, and the question was how much NaOH was I gonna need to neutralize it completely? Uh, based on the data, it was 10 milliliters. That makes sense, that makes good sense, right? If I have the same concentration, I should use the same amount of each chemical, and that'll neutralize it, okay? And if I wanna think about this mathematically, and we wanna think about concentrations, if you remember that molarity is equal to the number of moles per liter. And in this case, we can rearrange this and say that moles is equal to the concentration times liters. That's the number of moles. And so I have 0.5 molar, 0.5 molar, 10 milliliter, 10 milliliter. That's equal to the number of moles that were in this neutralization reaction. Let's try something different though. This time, instead of using the same concentration, I'm going to go ahead and use a different concentration of HCl, okay? I'm gonna keep the NaOH, the base that's in there. We're gonna still use 0 0.5 molar. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use uh, an unknown amount. No, I'm gonna use, what do I have? Let's use one molar, 1.0 molar HCl, and we'll use, uh, we'll still use 10 milliliters of this stuff at home predict how much NaOH is necessary. I'm gonna set it up, you do some math, I'll be right back. All right, you still with me? You haven't left yet? and go on to TikTok, what do I need? I said I needed one molar. One molar HCl. Let's add 10 milliliters to this stuff. Oh, too much, too much. That's okay, I'll dump it in here. I got an acid waste beaker right here. Okay, 10 mils. 10 mils HCl. Dumping it in my flask. I will know it's acidic if I go ahead and add it, and it is red or pink, universal indicator. Oh, look at that. Just like I thought, it's acidic. So, you at home, you predicted, maybe did some math. I've got one molar HCl. I've got 0.5 molar NaOH. Let's see. Uh, I've started at 
10 milliliters here. It goes to 25. I might need to actually fill this thing back up a little bit. I might need to add some more back to my burette just to make sure we have enough to get this thing done. And then I always, yeah, there we go. And boom, okay. So now I got 25 milliliters here. Now I know, because I just did one, that if this is a stronger concentration of acid, I'm gonna need more base to neutralize it. So I'm gonna fire this thing up and we're gonna roll this thing all the way past 10 milliliters because we know it should take more than 10 milliliters. And in fact, it is exactly double this concentration. Uh, one molar is exactly double 0.5 molar. So I'm gonna need even more than 10. I should need something close to 20 milliliters of this base to neutralize it. Let's see, I'm down at 15 now and I'm still in the acidic conditions. You can see it's still red. It's starting to turn purple, uh, but that purple goes away and I'm at 16 milliliters. Let's see if we can get to 20. Let's see if it's, it's what we predicted. I'm down here, now we're at 18, now we're at 19. Purple, it was purple for a second till I swirled it, mixed it up, got it all together, now it goes away. Let's go right down to 20. Uh, 19 and a half, oh, maybe 19 and a half is it. 19 and a half, it's close. You can almost see it. It's like half purple and half red. It's kind of cool. But let's go right to 20. Let's see what happens. Another half milliliter or so. A little drip by drip by drip by drip by drip. And 20. At 20, it is, I would love to see it just go green, but it's a strong acid and a strong base, and it's, it's going to be a really, really small window of, of uh, color change there. Oh, one drop. Come on. One drop. Do it. Oh, it's yellow. Oh, it went back pink. I got too excited for nothing. Come on! Oh, oh, gosh darn it. Whoa, whoa! That's, better than, that's way better than last time! That's like actually neutral. And now it's going yellow because I picked up some acid from the side. That's it. I mean, that's it. And what are we at? 20.1 milliliters for my crappy measuring? Come on, folks! That's pretty good. So, what did we learn? If I have one molar HCl and I use 10 milliliters of it, but I have half the concentration of the base, I need 20 milliliters to neutralize it, okay? We're coming up with this equation, it looks like. We're basically coming up with an equation that says the concentration of the acid multiplied by the volume of the acid should be equal to the concentration of the base times the volume of the base added. We call this equation our titration equation. And it's used to help us identify unknown concentrations. I hope this helps. I hope this helps plan a titration lab. I hope this helps with your neutralization reactions. I hope this helps with SCP-3 and SCP-5. If you got questions, drop in the comments, send me an email, or as always, ask me in class. Until next time, see ya!